Okay. All right. How do you decide which direction the branches of a hyperbola open? Side. <laughs> Whichever variable is positive. Okay. So it opens in the positive uh, direction of the positive variable. So if y is positive, it opens in a vertical direction. And if x is positive, it opens in a horizontal direction. Okay. And what are the biggest difference between equations of ellipses and equations of hyperbolas? Between the equations. Lizzie, what do you think? With ellipses, the x and y variable are both positive. But then with hyperbolas, one of them is negative. Okay. So hyperbola, one has a negative coefficient. And on an, on an ellipse, they're both positive. Uh, D, did you have something? Okay, that's the big one. Yeah. Uh, the hyperbolas are outside of the uh, Great. If we, the yeah, if we start talking about the shapes of the graphs, hyperbolas, they're outside, and ellipses are inside if we wanted to talk about that. Okay. All right. But we were mostly focusing on the equation. So here's the big one. The big one is that one of them has a positive sign and the other one has a negative sign, and that tells us the direction that they open. So like we've done before, we're going to now take information about the graph, and we're going to come up with the equation. So every one of these is a hyperbola. So we know that from scratch. So we should have in our heads kind of the general format, the standard form of the two of those. So let's put this down here. So we've got a center at 1, 5, and you do not have to graph it. It's just on there kind of for your convenience. So 1, 5 is right there. So the center's right there. It's got vertices at 1, 3. So it's got a vertex at 1, 3 and a vertex at 1, 7. So this is looking pretty good so far. And then it's got a foci at 1, 2. So focus right there. And it's got a focus at 1, 8. So focus right there. So from that, we know automatically this transverse axis is running in a vertical direction. So that means it's got to look something like this. Exactly what it looks like, we're not quite sure, but we can figure that out. So this is going to be, let's see, in the y direction. So we're going to have y minus 5, quantity squared. That one's positive. The x is going to be negative. So this is going to be x minus 1 quantity squared. And then we've got a 1 over there. Okay, so we've got that much to start off with. Okay, then we've got to figure out what goes underneath each one of those. So in the y direction, remember the fundamental rectangle is going to be up here and right there. So we know that in the y direction, let's see. So that's going to be our a. A in this case is 2, so we're going to square that and we're going to put a 4 underneath here. Everybody good with that? Okay. Now, there's one other piece that we need to fill in, and we've got to have a little <coughs> formula to do that. What is it? Isn't it like, I don't know how to word it, but it's like the 4 and then whatever is under the x minus mm -hmm. 1. You add them, and then that gives you the post sign. Mm -hmm. So, um, it is the Pythagorean theorem. Right, it's a that. squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're going to take in the direction of the y, so this is a 2, so this is going to be our 4. We don't know what this one is right here, but we do know that the c is the distance from the center to the focus, and that's going to be 1, 2, 3. So that's going to be 3 squared, so that's going to be 9. Mm -hmm. So I can move that to the other side. And the cool thing about this is because it's got a plus and we're looking for the b, this is just going to be a 5, and I think we talked about this before. I could figure out that this is going to be the square root of 5, that that's what b is. But that's just how far we go in the horizontal direction for the fundamental rectangle. I'd go radical 5, so about this far. I don't need that unless I need to come up with the formulas for the, the uh, asymptotes and stuff like that. So I can just put a 5 right here, put a box around this, done. <coughs> Any questions? Okay, got a question for Dane. Dane, is it okay for B to be bigger than A? Yeah, yeah. It is, totally fine. Okay, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, let's come down and take a look at this one. So we've got a focus at 2, negative 5. So 2, negative 5. We're down here, we've got a focus. Negative 8, negative 5 is another focus. 
And then we've got vertices at zero negative five. Ooh, okay. There's there's an issue here, isn't there? Okay, I'll have to fix this. So this is zero negative five. So we're right here. That's a that's a vertex. Ooh, we got to fix this, don't we? Okay. And negative six, negative five. Okay. So that's a vertex. Okay. We need to. Yeah. Did I get something wrong here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, positive two. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. That makes me feel better. Okay. So two negative five. So there's a focus and there's a vertex. Now does it look good? Yeah. All right. It's always uh, nice for me to make one mistake, <laughs> right? Okay. So now we look good. We've got the vertices in here. We've got the foci out there. It's clearly going to do something like this. So Samara, which variable is going to be positive? The X, very good. Okay, so the X is going to be positive, but we've got to know. Whoops, this is going to be a minus. We got to know where the center is. Yeah. I know where the center is. How do you know where the center is? It's in between. The right in between here. So you can, I mean, if it's like this, you can literally just count. If it's not, then you can use the midpoint formula. But this is going to be at negative three comma negative. Five. All of them have a negative five for a y coordinate. So let's see. This is going to be x plus three, y plus five. No. They're both negative. So it's going to be x minus minus three and y minus minus five. Are we okay with this? I know in the x direction that this distance right here is 3, so I can square that and I can put a 9 underneath the x. And I know that this distance right here is, let's see, that's 3, so it's from negative 3 all the way to 2, so that's going to be 5. So if I do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, this is going to be 9 plus b squared <coughs> equals, that's 5 squared, so that's 25. So this means we get a nice answer for B squared of 16. So we put a 16 right here. That would make it easy to graph the fundamental rectangle. That means that the slope would be a nice number and stuff like that. Um, but none of that matters. All we need to do is just come up with the equation. Okay, any questions? No, sir. All right. Okay. Back side, let's see. Center. Okay. I'm going to concentrate on graphing. You graph too, and let's see if we get this right. Uh, what? Crew's even going to do it. What do you know? <laughs> We're graphing? Mm hmm. Just trying to munch. Oh, they made it weird. No. Not to light work. Okay. Do I have mine graphed right? Yeah. Um, I got to put a little. Okay. Uh, oh. And then we've got some other information here, right? Because we know about symmetry. It gave us a focus on one side and a vertex on the other side. Let's do the one that's a little bit smaller. So this vertex means there's got to be another vertex over here. And this focus means there's got to be another focus over there. So let's see. If we're at 5 and this is 0, that means there's got to be another focus all the way over here. It's okay if it goes off the graph just a little bit. There's got to be another focus over here at 10. So that means it goes in the horizontal direction. And the center <coughs> is at 5, negative 3. So if it runs in the horizontal direction, the X is going to come first. Correct me if I'm wrong. X minus 5 quantity squared. Y plus 3 quantity squared. And we just need to figure out what goes underneath each one of those. In the X direction, what do we got? 4. Okay. So A is 2, so this is going to be 4. Yeah. Comes up a whole bunch, so all those perfect squares. Yeah. Is the next one 21? 
I think it is because this right here, the distance from the center to the focus would uh, be five. five. five so we're going to have a squared plus b squared. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've got a four plus a b squared wow. equals c squared is 25. So b is equal to 20, b squared is equal to 21. We don't need to know exactly what b is. We put a 21 right here. We put a box around it and we're all set. Okay, any questions there? All right. Okay. It says, don't write the equation, just figure out how the following information would be helpful. So, we got the center, we got H and K, right? A is 10, B is 7, transverse axis is horizontal. Okay. What's this going to help us with? Wait, what? One? A and B. Yeah. Okay. Going to help us with the rectangle. Transverse axis is horizontal. <clears throat> Transverse axis is horizontal. D? Okay. X squared positive. Okay. Wait, that tells us which way it is. Because oh. mm -hmm, it runs horizontally. Okay. It's going to have branches that go like this. Okay, now, I mean, we could go ahead and write down the equation. If they say A is equal to 10 and B is equal to 7, where does the 10 squared go? Under. Zach? Under the X. It would go underneath the X. It would go underneath the first one. Okay. Yeah. Because that's just kind of normal convention. We could get funky and move things around and, and stuff like that. Let's take a look at the next one. This one says the center is 2 comma 4. So you got H and K there. Vertex is 2, 0. So it's, wait. Zach? I think that shows you that it would be, Y would go first, or Y is the bigger one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Y would go first. It's the positive one, right? Okay, because if, if we're at 2, 4, if that's the center and we've got a vertex at two zero right here, there's a vertex. That means it's got to go like this. So that means y is going to be squared. Okay. So y, whoops, y squared is positive. Okay. And then it says the fundamental rectangle has an area of 32 square units. That tells you the code vertex of x. Okay. How far is it from here to here? Four. Okay. Whoops. The other one would be up here, wouldn't it? Okay. So how tall is the fundamental rectangle? I'm going, to, I'm going to change colors. It's going to be eight units tall. Okay. So from here to here is eight. So that means that the width of that would have to be four. Width of the fundamental rectangle would have to be four. So you'd have two on this side and two on this side, four here, four here. So then we could figure out what a squared and b squared are. Cool. So we okay with that? Dane, we okay with that? We got that down? Good. Great. So, uh, this last example in here, C has an asterisk by it. Would you look at that information and think about it? Why is there an asterisk there? Because it doesn't tell you. Shh. Thank you very much. Luke? There's not enough information to tell which direction it's going. So it could be, so we could have X minus two quantity squared minus Y minus four quantity squared. That equals one. <clears throat> we could say this is a nine right here and a 25 right here. By convention, we always do A as the first one here. doesn't matter which one's bigger and stuff like that. And then the other, other option would be to flip these around and say this would be Y minus four quantity squared do a nine and then a minus X minus two quantity squared over 25 equals one. Okay. You could even make an argument that you could take each one of these and then flip those around. Okay. So a whole bunch of different things would be possible with something like this. Okay. The last one that we're going to take a look at is where we take one that's not in standard form. We put it in standard form by completing the square and then we graph it. Okay. So the other ones you didn't have to graph, this one you do have to graph. 
Okay, so I'm going to give you a head start and I'm going to freeze this. So see if you can put that in the right format. Graph the whole thing, including all the key features, and that includes the asymptotes. So this is basically what you were doing yesterday, but you got to put it in the right form to start. Mm -hmm. Okay, go. Okay. Looks like most of you are done with the equation. I'm going to pull this up. If we got the same thing, then we're in good shape, and then we can start graphing this. Um, I got y oh, plus wait, 3 wait. quantity squared over okay. 4 minus y plus 4 quantity squared. Whoops, that's an x. Oh, It'll come back. That's an x. Okay. x plus 4 quantity squared over 1 equals 1. Raise your hand if you got that. Uh, wait, Great. I'm almost done. Okay, oh, if you made a mistake finished. somewhere, it's uh, usually with completing the square, and a lot of times it's right here. In fact, I even make mistakes sometimes when I'm factoring this out. Remember, you can't complete the square with a, with a coefficient other than a positive one here. So we have to factor out the negative. That's going to change the sign of both of those, so we got to be super careful with that. Okay, so take a look at that. Are there any questions? Easy to make mistakes on. Yes. Okay. I'm going to write down the asymptotes before I do anything else. So this is going to be y plus 3. I like putting that in parentheses. <coughs> plus or minus. And then I'm going to put the x plus 4 in parentheses. And then I'm going to make a fraction out of this. What goes on the top of the fraction? 4. Not four. It's got to be the rise, so that's got to have something to do with the y's. Yeah. <coughs> two. So we take the square root of that, take the square root of the four, we put a two on here, and then we take the square root of this, we put a one on here. Now, if you want to clean it up and just write it as a plain old two, that's totally okay. But we've got an important feature of the graph, which is the asymptotes that help make the shape. We've got that before we even start, and then let's just make sure that this works out well and that we've got the right thing. So we changed the graph a little bit, so we've got some room. We've got a center at, so I'll put a big C. This is going to be careful here, negative four comma negative three. 
So back four and down three. There's the big center. In the Y direction, we're going to go two. So we're going to go up here and we're going to go down here. In the X direction, we're going to go one. So we're going to go like that. And this is the fundamental rectangle. I'm going to draw the asymptotes in here. Been working on it. And you'll notice that these go through, these go through uh, negative four, negative three. Mm, no, it's not. Oh. At least I hope it's not. Oh, wow. There we go. Okay, it still goes through negative four, negative three, and you'll notice that the slope of this one is positive two, so we've got that one covered. And the slope of this one is negative two, so we've got that one covered. So the only thing we need to do is, remember, it opens in the y direction. So it has a vertex here and here, runs along this, curves around, hits that vertex, and then heads out here, runs along this asymptote, hits that one, and heads out there. Arrows on both ends. So we've got our center, negative four, comma, negative three. We've got a vertex at negative four comma. Let's see if we had two, that would be a one, a negative one. This vertex would be at negative four comma negative five. And then the only thing left to figure out is what the foci are. Okay, it's pretty narrow. The more narrow the shape, whether it's a parabola or a hyperbola, the closer the focus is gonna be here. So if we do four plus one, that's going to be C squared. So C is radical five. So we've got a point about right here and a point about right here, about 2.2, I think. So this is going to be a focus at negative four comma. We'll make sure I get this right. We're going to take the center, the Y coordinate of the center, and we're going to add radical five. And then the one down here is going to be at negative four comma negative three minus radical five. Yeah. Uh, does like the hyperbola ever touch the asymptote? It's a great question. So would you say that out loud, really nice and loud so everybody can hear it? Does the hyperbola ever touch the asymptote? No. Can somebody answer that for us? No. Okay. No. So no. asymptotes, no. okay, for our understanding right now, asymptotes are lines that approximate the graph, that the graph approaches. They are not the actual graph. So okay. it, it approaches it, it gets super close, gets as close as you can possibly get without actually touching. Like, so it really is zero, zero, zero. Close. Yeah, you can think of it that, that yeah, way. Okay. okay, any questions? Closer. I, I just, okay. I have, let me I get rid of this. About that. 